guys. I wanted to come on here real quick to introduce the video. We are all enjoying um, some of the aspects of being here at home. Uh, but I wanted to come back with an update from my oldest daughter, Becca, who is a dancer. And um, a lot of you guys might remember her as Head Mocha Girl, HMG. There's a whole playlist for her if you're interested. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. My name is Natasha. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you won't miss any of my videos. But I wanted to share this interview that um, the dance school where my daughter works um, asked her to record about her process and her um, history as a dancer. It's a good update for you guys because it was recorded a couple of days ago. She's working at the dance school until um, she begins her auditions uh, to go into a professional ballet company. So I wanted to share the update with you guys because the minute I saw it, I was like, can I use that? And she was like, yes. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Be blessed. Hi, everybody. I hope you guys are all doing so good and you're having a good week, even though all this craziness is going on. I hope you're staying healthy and strong. As long as I can possibly remember, I've always wanted to dance professionally. I've always wanted to dance full time for my career. Um, as long as I can possibly remember. Um, but I started taking lessons when I was four. Um, I don't recall really telling my mom like, oh, like I really love dancing, I wanna do it. I honestly don't even remember why I love started like like I wanted to do it so much, but I definitely don't remember telling my mom so. But I think she was kind of just like, ah, you know, you you let's your girl, let's just try dancing. I don't know. So I got put um in lessons for the first time when I was four years old, um and yeah, I loved it and did it all throughout elementary school. And then when I turned nine, my family moved from New York to Delaware. Um, and while I was in New York, my training was more so, I mean, like I, I was four when I started, did it till I was nine in New York, so it wasn't super serious, it was more so like at church, or, you know, it was really relaxed. Um, but when I moved to Delaware, and saw all the amazing studios that were around, I ended up kind of t taking it a little more seriously in the way that I was training. Um, things got a lot more intense, which was good, but also hard. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyways, I continued training in Delaware all the way through high school and always, always throughout the entire time I wanted to do it professionally. I definitely, I definitely went through a time where, um, I kind of had to debate over whether or not I wanted to go to college and dance or if I wanted to, um, maybe dance but not necessarily professionally full time. Um, I, both of my parents went to Ivy League school, so growing up I always thought like, you go to school, you graduate, you go to college, and then you go on and do whatever. Like, you don't just not go to college, like that's ridiculous. I never understood people who did that, I thought they were kind of out there, <laughs> and I never wanted to be one of those people. Um, so when it came time around my junior year of high school to start looking into what I was going to do beyond high school, I really struggled because it's like I love dancing and I want to do dancing. Um, and pursuing dance as a career, it takes a lot of um, commitment and dedication and a lot of time. Um, so much so to the point where it can be very difficult to say, you know, try to pursue professional career, but also go to college to be like a journalist. You know what I mean? It's not impossible, but it's very challenging. Um, so I got to the point where I realized I have to choose one and I definitely went through a time of like inner turmoil because I was like I can't not go to college and be one of those people but at the same time I want to dance. So I ended up choosing to dance um, and I auditioned for a company in Syracuse, New York called Light of the World Ballet. I had gone to their summer program twice and absolutely loved them um, and I auditioned for their training program. So. Um, with that company, we, there was like the professional company with all like the paid dancers and then underneath that was the trainee program and as a trainee you kind of studied and rehearsed and performed with the company um, 
but it wasn't, it was still like kind of a program, like a training program, where you were still training to be a professional dancer. You weren't quite there yet, but you were definitely at, you know, you were doing it full time. So I ended up doing that and moving to Syracuse when I was 18 years old, right after I graduated high school. And that was an amazing time for sure. One thing I love about that company in particular was that, um, they really danced anywhere there was a floor. They really had a heart to reach out to the community. So, I mean, like they literally would go wherever there was a floor. Like I, you know, I've been to, in jails, I've gone to nursing homes, in like a shopping mall, like literally anywhere there was a floor. I got to travel with them last May, I went to China and I danced there for two weeks with them. It was an amazing experience. So it was an amazing opportunity as a dancer and as a woman. Um, it definitely grew me like having to live on my own, you know, several hours away from home. So living on my own and doing all the grown up things like paying rent and groceries and all that. It was, it was an adjustment for sure, but it was so rewarding. Um, and I look back on it very fondly. Um, but I think while I was there, I think I probably ran face to face with one of the biggest struggles that I probably ever faced as a dancer. Um, and that is the problem of my mind. And I'll be honest, like, I think for, for me, I've definitely struggled with getting over what's up here when it comes to dance for a while. Um, but when I, when I moved to New York and started training with the company, um, I think I came face to face with the reality that dance is literally, it's a very physical art. It requires your body, it requires all of you, it's very physical. But at the same time, I almost feel like it's like even more mentally challenging than it is physically challenging. And what I mean by that is I would find myself really dealing with a lot of insecurity and unsurety. Um, as a dancer, I feel like I've always been someone who I've had to work really hard for what I have. I, I don't feel like I was necessarily, you know, born with tons of like natural talent and I was able just to lift up my leg to my head from birth and all this stuff. Like I feel like I really had to work for a lot of what I've gotten. And I just struggle with a lot of um, not very much confidence, very insecure, all those things, a lot of self doubt. And what I would find is that like, say I was in practice or something and we were working on a specific combination or I was in rehearsal and I was supposed to be kind of getting into the role or whatever, but I was too insecure to fully let loose. And what I found to be so interesting was that when I would go on my own and practice the same combination that I fell flat on my face in, <laughs> in practice or, you know, work on my artistry on my own, I found that like, without the pressure of like, oh my gosh, everyone's here, I'm so insecure, I'm the worst dancer in the room, like, without that pressure, I found I could like, um, you know, execute everything to the best of my ability. I found I had no problems. Um, and so, I don't know, it just made me realize that like, wow, like as a dancer, I could be capable of so much, but if I can't get past what's in here, I'll never get to unlock all the other things that I'm capable of. And so it's definitely taken me a lot of time. I'm still working through, just working through those insecurities and facing those lies of like, I'm not good enough and I'm not pretty enough as a dancer, I'm not flexible enough. And just, you know, as soon as those thoughts come into my, hind, into my mind, just being like, no, that's like actually not true. Like, where did you get that from? And just working through it. And so it was definitely a process, but it was a good process. So um, I trained with a company, the training program was two years. So I did it for two years. While I was up there, I also got into teaching. Um, the company also had their own ballet school and I taught there and it was definitely a transition for me. Um, I think like as a student, I don't think I ever realized how much work goes into being a good teacher. Um, and I'm also the type of person where it's like, if I'm gonna do something, like I don't wanna just do it well, I don't wanna just do it like good enough, like I wanna be perfect at it. And so I think I really struggle getting past my own mindset of like, I need to be the perfect teacher even though like I've never done this before. Blah, blah, blah. And so it was like a little bit of like a, a growing curve, or a lot of a growing curve. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I got into teaching and choreography and all that fun stuff. And um, yeah, like I said, it was very uncomfortable for me, but it pushed me to 
new heights, I guess you could say. So I guess if, you know, one of my biggest pieces of advice, you know, for dancers out there, um, be two things. One thing is really work on your mindset. It's so important. Do not tell yourself before you go to do something that you can't do it or that you're the worst dancer in the room. It's simply not true. Like, what standard are you measuring yourself against? You know what I mean? Like, your dance is beautiful because it comes from you. It's not because you can lift your leg up to your head or do 50 million turns. It's beautiful because it's yours and no one can move exactly like how you can move or do <laughs> exactly what <laughs> Uh, no one can do exactly what you can do. So always remember that. And the second thing that I would say is don't be afraid of things that make you uncomfortable. Um, because if you just shy away from things because they make you uncomfortable, you'll miss out on so much in life. And it's those very things that make you grow farther beyond what you could ever think. So um, yeah, that's my advice. That's kind of a little bit about my story. Oh, after also... After I finished the training program, graduated last summer, ended up coming back home, kind of on a gap year, ended up teaching at Bella, and I loved it, and it's been awesome, and yeah, hoping to continue on with my dance career in the future, um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me, so stay healthy, stay safe, I guess, and yeah, see you later.